Comedy is an essential business. And freaking A, the pictures, all the pictures I'm seeing of lousy haircuts, I think that should be essential. I'm getting PTSD from haircuts. Absolutely, absolutely. I'm like, damn, they're going to shut me, shut me down every way. Good Lord. Wow. Let's we'll see if we can get some people to donate to you. Here we go. We're live. Talk nice and loud so that I can keep this angle. Hey, Facebook people, get ready. I know. Theo Garfield. Woo! Oh my gosh, he's here in the flesh. He's live. Show him you're live. I'm live. What's up? Shout out fire. <laughs> what's the latest what's going on in your life uh man you know nothing but this uh, coronavirus yes this is something else you know like i was telling you i'm 69 years old and i never saw nothing like this man absolutely i never volunteered for nothing but the navy you know and yeah. they just voluntarily volunteered me for this corona stuff Yes, thank you for serving. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you as well. Thank you for remembering. Do you know how many men I thank and they don't, and I, they know I'm a veteran and they don't say thank you back. Thank you for thanking me. Oh, you're welcome. I know, I know how hard it is. I know about them days. Yes. Oh, my gosh. I've got jokes about it, but it really wasn't funny. Well, I got some jokes about it, too. Yes, we should just we should just have like a military time to talk those jokes back and forth. Absolutely, absolutely. Do you, what do you want to tell people that are having a hard time struggling right now? I mean, first of all, we got to have faith. We got to believe, you know. It's all about believing and being straightforward with it. But, you know, we all have different experiences. So like by me being in the Navy, out there on that boat. You know, I learned a lot just being, you know, confined and quarantining yourself. And everybody can't deal with that because of that deep depression and things like that and your anxieties and things like that, you know. So all I'm going to do, you know, like I always say, life is a laugh. Yes, absolutely. So you've seen a lot of, what city are you in? Well, I, I currently, I'm currently in San Diego, California. Oh, wow, that's really close to Vegas. You just go straight up the freeway. Straight, oh, that's why we're not flying no more. <laughs> we're grounded in more ways than one. <laughs> in our rooms, like when we were teenagers. We could sneak out at night. <laughs> uh, no sneaking. <laughs> Stay out the way, you know, limited the problems. Yeah. So you're in San Diego. So do you rock the San Diego comedy scene when the world is going? I mean, you know, um, I do. I have to host a couple of places and I've been out here. I've hit every, um, every stage out here as well. But you know how the comedy community is. And prior to me coming out here, I was in Denver and other places and whatnot. So I definitely, every time I go into a market, I'm going into your comedy community. So I definitely I, um, host at American Comedy Company. And all the other platforms, I definitely have, um, you know, performed and participated. Wonderful. What's your favorite city to not live in but do comedy in? Atlanta, Georgia. Yeah, why? Uh, first of all, you got the blanket. If they give you five seconds, you don't make them laugh, they'll boo you. What? You got to come, you gotta come definitely prepared down in Atlanta. That's so cool. That's really cool. I love challenges like that, man. Oh, yeah, they put me behind a headline at one time. When I first started off about 13 years ago, uh, Doo Doo Brown, John Gooden. They say, I said, hey, I thought I was going up. They say, you are, after the headline. And they went up there and uh, locked the doors. Uh, Kelly did. They said, hey, we're going to lock the doors. We got somebody coming up, which I believe they're trying to set me up the bomb. But I got to stand in ovation, you know? What? That's so great. So you started about 13 years ago or a lot longer than that? I got 13 hard years in. It's just, I started off in New York. But the thing is, when I got into the market, I done thousands of open mics. Like, when I went to Denver, for instance, four years ago, I lived in Denver. Well, say five, and I moved out there. Uh, I done 100 open mics in 90 days. What? Holy Toledo. 
Man, I thought when I did 25 shows in New York and Philly in three months that I was killing it. <laughs> Guess not. <laughs> so tell me... If, now, when you were in New York, how long ago was that that you... Uh, that was before my career when I really cranked it up. That was like 14, 15 years ago. And I was just hit open mics. And I decided that I wanted to do comedy. I went to New York first. So my mentor is Gladys Simon from the Gladys Simon room at Comic Strip Live, Hamburger Harry's before that. Do you know Gladys? I don't know Gladys. She's a character when you go out to New York. That little, she's like four foot eight, but she is one, she, she knows everything about what it takes to go from open mic level to headliner, so. Cool. Yeah, I'd love you to meet her. You'll love her. So what's your best thing about doing comedy in New York? Because I love that scene. I mean, just the country period, you know, because I don't done kind of know all the markets. My thing is going out, doing my homework, proud to go on to the stage, and definitely don't insult the audience. Yeah. I'm definitely against insulting the audience because it takes so much just to get together and just come out to a show. So, you know, I do my homework and I don't do insulting jokes. I don't um, uh, tag my audience members that come out to the shows. That's wonderful. I've seen some people that do nothing but crowd work through their whole act. And the, the thing I noticed is if the audience is there through the whole show, they understand what's going on, that he, picks, he, he or she picks on everybody and they're on board. But the mistake a lot of them make is if somebody gets comes in late, they just attack them like they've been there from the beginning and they're not on board with it. Absolutely. It's like an escape, you know, and that's how I ended up doing comedy. I went to a concert and it was a comic that's out there now and um, I was very upset and I was down at Birmingham and a lot of people called me the following morning and they were like, what you going to do, man? And then my sister called me and she said, well, you know, that's not the way to handle that. You want to become better than that person. So a week later, I took a flight to New York. Wow. And the rest is history. And that person, you know, of course, they don't call me. They see a lot of my work, but it's not about that person. It's about, you know, America, the world, and the people that's in that audience that pay for that ticket. That's right. That's right. I love your attitude. You're so cool. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I don't get to meet you in person, but I feel like I'm getting a hug from you right now. So. Hey, me too. Me too. Uh, yeah. <laughs> In the house. <laughs> I'm very inquisitive. My mother said when I was growing up, Jesus Christ, you could, you know, she was Jewish, so it didn't bother her to say that. And she's, Jesus Christ, you ask more questions than three wise men could answer. So I'm just using my strength right now. Uh, hey, no problem. I'm open for that. No problem. What's the funniest thing you've seen a heckler do? Funniest, it'd be more sad than the funniest. Okay. Oh uh, man, I mean, I seen one guy when I first started off. He came in talking crap, looked like play for play. You know, he wasn't gonna be in that. And it was, I remember one girl out in uh, Denver. This girl, I don't know where I came from. I said, I bet you got some Easter eggs in your pocketbook. <laughs> I mean, it, it wasn't Easter time; it was summertime. Well, she just kept coming for people. You know, every time coming and coming. And I had a room in Denver at the time. I was like, man, when I get up here, you know, I got it so bad. When I get you as a heckler, because I don't come for hecklers. So if you come for me, I'm going to keep on my show because I have the ability to put the audience on you. Okay? What? That's one of your homework. But if I get a heckler, I'm going to get you because at the end of the show, I, I got to apologize to you. I can have 5,000 in the audience. I'll find that one heckler because I want to let you know that it wasn't men like I shot it at you because I don't know what you were doing coming for me. But you know, I'm gonna be well protected for myself because once again, I believe proper preparation prevents poor performances. Wonderful. That's really, you know, that was gonna be one of my questions is what kind of tips do you have for new comics? And I include myself in that. Uh, come on, every day I guess we knew you saying that. I see you be out there working your market. <laughs> Do a lot of homework. Um, I've done a lot of research. Know the history of comedy. Uh, pick some books up. Look at some films. 
do some open mics, do much open mics as you can do. And I start off in the mirror as well, do a lot of work in the mirror. But like I said, mainly, you got to do a lot of open mics, do a lot, much as you can. I don't care if you're the only person left. it been times I've been in rooms where didn't nobody know me, and it'd be 50 open micers back in the days, and I'd be the last one, me, the owner, and the dog. <laughs> and you still got it. And the person you brought with you, you're like, man, it ain't my turn yet. But you still go ahead with your force, you know? Yeah. It take a lot to get up on that mic. Yes, ma'am. That's wonderful. Now, the the whole scenario in the world uh, is the worst I've seen in all of my life. So what would you tell people right now uh, to, how to hang on? Uh, man, you just got to believe in something. You know, we got to just believe in our higher power and just pray and just, you know, just hang in there and stay indoors, of course, I guess. Stay indoors. That's what I'm doing now because... Once again, um, I've been doing comedy over 13 years. I've been a celebrity national hairdresser over 32 years around the world. So now both markets are shut all the way down. Should have been a mortician. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> and now I just, you know, basically going to go in out the grocery store. You just go home and just, you know, my main thing, just pray. I got to pray. Just pray. Wow. I love that. Yeah, so... The, it's hit you hard because you can't do comedy like you did and you were at a certain level making a ton of money at it compared to some of us and also you can't do hair so and, or fly to do it around the world. So if people want to buy your merchandise or donate to your cash app or PayPal, where do you want them to hit you up? I didn't go to my cash app, but it'll be my first name. It's very long. It's 12 letters. Okay. It's Theo uh, Phyllisy. It'll be cash sign T H E O P H I L I S I E. Theo Philosophy. Okay. So that's like philosophy and Theo together. Is that a hybrid? No, it's not a hybrid. It's just. I love it. I never heard that name before. Yeah, I get questioned every day. But um, it's Greek. I'm um, in the power of uh, cloth, power of the Lord. Lovely. The cloth. So where did you grow up? I'm a native of Birmingham, Alabama. Well, I grew up in Birmingham. I done a little bit in Jersey City, New Jersey as well. And I got a little grammar um, of Akron, Ohio in there. But I'm a native of Birmingham, Alabama. I love Alabama. When I went in the army, I, they put me in Fort McClellan. I loved it there. Yeah, Fort McClellan. That's in Anniston, correct? Yes, Anniston, Alabama. Yep. yep. Got a new comedy club out there too. No way. Yes, they do. Yeah, he's on my page. There's a guy I can't think of that club name right now. I think you're not even going to interview him. But yeah, it's a nice comedy club. He just opened up last year down there. Yes. That's who's hurting, too, is comedy clubs are hurting to stay open, to keep it rolling. Yeah, it's sad. It's sad. It's sad. But, you know, uh, well, people are going to need comedy after all of this. They got to need comedy, man. We got to uplift the world. We got to bring the world back together. It's going to take comedy. Yes, it is. You know, like, I think that the day that every business reopens, that comics should get out there and greet the customers coming in and... and make the employees laugh. I, I, if comics could go stand out on the lawn of a hospital right now, I bet the news crew would get out there. Yeah, I, I can agree to that. Depends on what market though, you know, what market you're in, but um, I can agree to that, absolutely. Yeah, well, us. We gotta do it. so you, um, they can donate to you and then people wanna follow you. If they've watched you and they connected with what you said, like I did, like if people want to stalk you on the internet, where would you want them to stalk you? Oh, you can go on Facebook, Theo, T-H-E-O, Garfield, G-A-R-F-I-E-L-D, like the K. <laughs> also on Instagram, Comedian Garfield fans page, and also on Facebook, I have Comedian Garfield fans page. Wonderful. Videos. Of course, I got gang old videos, all that on YouTube. You know, of course, yes. 
What's the thing that you did in comedy? This is my last question. What did you accomplish in comedy? What one thing that you're most proud of? Uh, um, kind of calm my PTSD down. Nice. I can understand that. Oh my gosh. Because PTSD, it gets worse and worse until you get a handle on it. It gets worse. Oh yeah, you just have to go, you know, talk to, you have to talk to somebody. Like, we are comedians, but you got mind mechanics, you know, psychotherapists. You know, you go to the VA, and I'm a war veteran, you know, there's a storm. But you go to the VA, then they'll help, you know, they're direct. Like, I want to get on stage one time. She's like, you got to get on stage, you got to go fishing. I started, you know, doing, you know, my tours and then, of course, going deep sea fishing. They kind of alleviated that. Wow. I, I used to go to my shrink at the VA in Portland, Oregon, and every time I ho told her anything about my PTSD, she would say, I have that, I have that. I, it's like she was trying to steal my identity, so I started making stuff up to see if she knew the difference between the truth. <laughs> it was, it was like, why am I going to the shrink? <laughs> Coming right. a liar. You know, I lived in Portland before. I stayed out in Beaverton. What? So did I. I've lived in Beaverton twice. Oh, yeah. We was in the shipyards when I was in the Navy. Yes. I stayed out there for one year. Wow. Were you on Swan Island? Uh, it was Northwestern Shipyard. Yep. My, my stepdad worked for Bingham Willamette where they would scrape all the bottoms of the ships when they're in dry dock. Yeah. Yeah. I love that place, Swan Island. Y'all got to see Swan Island. Yeah, that's awesome, man. Awesome. Hey, I like that place out there. I go out there to the water, coast out there to that coast. Yeah? Uh, yeah, that's awesome. Sea that like Seaside is a cool town where they have the turnaround? Yeah, it might have been that. I remember going up through it. There's a lot of trees to go through it. You take a long road. Yes. It was cool. It was cool. I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. You're bringing back good memories for me. There you go. Thank you. Good memories, right? Yes. I just want to remind you that the Cash App where you can donate to Theo Garfield is dollar sign Theo, T H E O P H I L I S I E. You're good. <laughs> Thank you so much. I love you. Take I love you too, Ms. Linda. Thank you for this platform and all the comics that came before me and after me. I just want to appreciate you and appreciate them as well. We all, you know, one big happy family, man. It's time for us to be together. That's it. No more hate. Thank you so no much. Love you lots. I'll see you in Vegas soon. Love you too, Ms. Linda. Likewise. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.